California steamer on the Southern Central Line, rolling over bridges under the western skies. The brakeman is a dreamer. He's got music in his heart. Trumps his mandolin under the stars. Well, that night, well, he's dreaming about the last time that he saw her face frozen on the platform as the steamer pulled away. She grew smaller and smaller, disappearing from his mind. The California steamer on the southern central line. It goes. Long park. Roll on, roll on. With a California steamer. Well, it never runs on time. Clapping up those dusty miles as empty stations whistle by. They go by. Your ticket stub said four o'clock, but y'all know that's a lie. That's never gonna kill someone or make your baby cry. Hell, let's build another dam and let those rivers all run dry. The California steamer never runs on time. It goes 40 more miles to Lompoc. Gotta roll. Bravo, folks. Welcome to the uh, Standard Hotel here in West Hollywood. I found my way here. The sea will part before me, and I get a chance to hang with a uh, great cat, beautiful cat, and a great musician, Brent Rademacher. Welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. Thank you. Great to see you in person, Jake. The California steamer is always not on, is never on time. I know. Story of my life. How much of the, uh, of that, of that vibe the, just a really laid-back vibe. I mean, one of the cathartic things about it is like just being able to discover cats like yourself, who are part of a scene that is dictated on slow tempo, not yeah. fast tempo. And then there's also this sort of whole idea of just indigenously learning how to play stuff. But I just how early in your life you were born and raised here, right? Mm, Florida and then California. Always coastal. Yes, always on the west coast. Too. West coast of Florida west coast of here it's it's funny it's like it's tempo and speed it's like you know even when we were in into punk we we didn't play it wasn't all about playing super fast you know mm -hmm. fast songs are hard you know especially fast bluegrass and country and western that's hard to do I'm I purposely like just then that number right there I, I pull back sometimes just to get to the to the heart of the chords and the emotion, you know? People want you to project your voice. They're having a ball seeing you here, so. Um, talk louder? Talk louder, yeah, <laughs> I know I was giving you a non-verbal cue. All but, right, uh, hold on, let's try this. Cheers, people. Yeah. I mean, what's hard about playing up-tempo bluegrass? You do it. Oh, it takes skill. Explain the skill. It, it's like. How much rhythm do you, internal time feel do you need? Because there's well, probably not a trap set. As a bass player in Beachwood Sparks, I was able to keep up with kind of punk ethos, but simplest, simplicity and, and power um, against that laid-back music. It was, it was easy for me, but when you're talking about fast, intricate bluegrass, 
That's a, that's like a it's like either a handed down hereditary. Uh, it could be a learned, studied, um, but for me, I, I don't possess it. I just worship it from afar, and I fake it when I can, you know? How, how predicated is Beachwood Sparks? First of all, I'm, can you talk, how predicated are they on a drive, on you guys on a driving rhythm? Pushing you know, me, like, like, like who, can you talk about, you play, I didn't realize you played bass in that, so horns on pedal steel. Yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan Horn was the pedal steel, but not the original one. Farmer Dave is Farmer, the, right. he's the original pedal steel player. Actually, he started on lap steel. And when you talk about rhythm in Beachwood Sparks, we kind of, we had the greatest drummer, and we have the greatest drummer, Aaron Spursky, but we, we never really sat and thought about, you know, making people dance. It was more about moods. And um, I think, Creating a good a mood, yeah. or different moods, yeah. And I, I, I did. Now that, I we, did. now that we talk about it, it's something that, you know, when we play again, and since we have been playing, I think we get people boogieing more. Um, Farmer Dave is still part of Beachwood Sparks. Oh yeah. And and he it's he is. Is he doing like like uh, like he, natural sounds? Like yeah, he, he plays a double lot pedal of steel guitar. Going? He plays. He uses his um, keyboard. When Dan plays the pedal steel, Farmer Dave will use play guitar, his lap steel, and his keyboard, and his pedals, and he, he blows into a... A melodica. A tube, yeah. So uh, he's, he's a vibe merchant, so it's, you know, it's hard to... You can't put him in a road case. It's just whatever he shows up with, he just plays. Um, what was essentially the fan base for Beachwood Sparks? Mm. I think we had a lot of indie rockers who were really looking to discover music from a gone era, you know? Um, and then I think we found an audience with some people who heard our music and found us to be like a missing link, you know? Because there was bands doing uh, birds influence music and but they were bands like Wilco and um, some other bands like that but they 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 were more uh, great bands but they were more rock bands we were the ones who really like you know mistakenly sounded like notorious bird brothers or gilded palace of sin you know without the great songs and the and the great singing you know but we did our best but but i think a lot of people said like Oh wait, these guys sing out of tune, and they—they're like you know the new writers of the Purple Sage at and in their beginning era. You know, they're—I think we had the vibe, and I think some older cats. Um, I guess that was my, be my better question: is that the, the age range? Probably a lot. Of, there was a lot of chicks, and then also it was varying in age from young to old. It started out young. The first audience for Beachwood Sparks was young. Really. What yeah. kind of, I mean, how did that happen? Just college kids. Because the band was young. I mean, I was in you my in 30s. You were in college? Was that, was that? No, those, ki those guys were just, uh, just out of college. Wow. Um, they just graduated. They were still in college when we started Beachwood Sparks. Now, who's that? No, just to be Chris clear. Chris Gunst and Gunst. Farmer Dave and, and Ben Knight. Um, ben Knight. Pure, sublime character. They all went to Loyola Marymount. They all graduated roughly at the same did time. Did they have a band there? Um, two of them did. Gunst and Jimmy Tamborello had a band called Stick Strictly Ballroom, like a post-hardcore band. Oh, this is... Yeah, and then Ben Knight was the music director at the radio station, so he let us come up and do radio shows and stuff. Um, so it started with their fan base from Loyola, or just young cats, be um, or because they were, in, mainly you guys were pegged you, as like... You a, know, I'm forgetting about a whole, like, time. Actually, it started off with L.A. Scenesters. People yeah. in LA um, hanging out in Silver Lake and discovering the East Side and discovering that there was more to life than just you know goth and and and, and like you know punk. tattoos. Yeah, it's like punky, like punky Nirvana like time, which I love. But I mean, just 
it was more of a scene thing. And then when we got signed to Sub Pop and started putting out records, then the audience was like younger at the shows. It was all people collecting records and really into, Sub Pop has a kind of a built-in fan base. And between like our influences, who we were, where we came from, and the label, and just the time, like like the the Crows took us out on tour. This is a perfect example. And people were yelling, you know, Weezer at us. Weezer. Yeah. Weezer. I, 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 did, could did eventually the audience became older because the younger cats were like, why are they playing out of tune? And they could, <laughs> like, I mean, singing out of tune. Singing out of tune. Um, I mean, like the dead. Can you talk about as far as Beachwood being a a. a the missing part in the in the lineage of, of the music. I really do. Think and can you explain what what was the the antecedent, what was missing, and then what your the, the gap you're filling in? I, I really what we did fill in. Uh, now it's different. It's all filled in. The gaps are filled in. There's a lot of bands that have come along, folk based, country based. But you guys were. There was a gentleness and a realness about what we did when we did it. Um, there was a, a looseness as well. And there was a real strict um, respect for the Burrito Brothers and the birds, mm. a la Notorious Bird Brothers. And I mean, Younger Than Yesterday. We really respected the, and, and the, the guitars and the production and, and the presentation. We, we had like, like we went out to the desert in search of that vibe that Graham and Chris and the burritos cultivated and, and we, we actually felt like we got in touch with it. But the cool thing was we, we had never played country music. Just like Graham Parsons, he, he was an expert in it, but that was like a quick study if you ask Hillman about it. He'll, he'll tell you that it wasn't, he grew up around it, but it, he, he, it was a learned experience, and he decided that it was going to be a learned behavior. And we did the same thing, and we weren't really copying him as much as we were really like the model of the birds was like really attractive to Chris and I. I know that we really used to like, we didn't want to be famous at all. We actually wanted to be, you know, kind of more infamous and like, so you want to be a rock and roll star was like a great way for us to like, like that was kind of something that we, we wanted to be successful, but we didn't want to be like sellouts. And we would laugh at anybody who was like trying to make it. And that's probably why we didn't make it because we didn't try hard enough. Well, what, I mean, that's also, it's all subjective. What is, you know, what is making it, you know? Um, you know, can you talk about uh, your father? Um, and you know, have you uh, communicated with him since his passing? I have. I felt um, this has been a really challenging part of my life and um, time in my life. And I, I've, I've, I've actually, I've always in the past, anytime I've not always, but I always struggle with getting through hard times, you know? And this is one time that I've been able to stand up against it and stand and stand through it. Because everything hasn't been perfect in my life in the last, uh, you know, especially in the last four months with my father passing, with one of the key guys in Gospel Beach um, leaving the group and... Um, Who left the group? Jason Soda. And um, that wasn't easy because that was a... Uh, but why have you been more resilient now? I don't, I, because no his spirit no, is there. His spirit, he, oh, this, I his feel spirit like he's watching there. me. He's kicking pedals. He is, I feel like he's what watching What a badass, I, this dude. He played with Maynard. <laughs> well, he took us to see Maynard, and I remember the trumpet section coming out into the audience. I, I knew the guy's names in Maynard's band, his, his trumpet, I knew all the guys, but I knew his trumpet section. And my favorite guy, um, when they did Hey Jude, he sent the trumpet section out into the audience in the aisles and for the na 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 ba na na ba. And the, my guy was right next to me. Wow. Biff was right next to me. I could see him and he, I could like, I could almost like smell him. I could see his clothes. I could see his shirt was a little wrinkled. I could, 
I, and I was just like, I want to be in a band. I just wanted to, and that was, my dad took us to that, you know? I mean, the idea there is like, that never really translated over in Maynard's LPs. The live experience of music was intense. Did, was was Ayahuasca involved when you guys went out to uh, to pursue this sort of, I don't want to say sequel, uh, you're clearly burning your own lineage, but I mean, the mute. all I can say is that I have to believe it's, if, if you guys were pursuing a, a to think is one. Yeah. Then there needed well, to be a, 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 you know, break that down. That wasn't really the case, it was more like how do we get to, how do we, like their crystal that they hung, that Graham and the birds hung, and right. other groups too, it wasn't just them, but they were the main ones, the one, that, we just wanted to kind of bask in that, we, we didn't really, it, I mean, I think it, at, at, for our fall at Beachwood Sparks, because of where we came from, we didn't, we didn't, we were friends, we were, we were friends, but we were like buddies, so it wasn't like this, like, uh, all for it wasn't this um, we, we didn't try to create that oneness that you're talking about that spirituality of oneness we didn't even discover that till later and that was thinking, I mean thinking is one on the bandstand that didn't come that was a latent thing we no we we didn't we we just we were holding on for dear life but but the, and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean we we loved each other and we do we did then and we were when we'd go to England and Spain and it was us against the world Jesus, what a it, cathartic experience! It was, but it, but but there, but that, but I think that spirituality, that spirituality that you're talking about, that that ayahuasca, that that stuff like came later. We were like, it came later in in what sense? If in the group I, I just, sense? I just think we bonded I mean, as, as and humans lit. later, you ah. know, and started really caring about each other. It was more about like the music and the band. And then it turned out that we cared about each other as people enough to say, "Let's stop the band for a while. You want to go to college? Uh, you you want to do you want to do your own thing?" And, and and not to be bitter about that, you know. At least from my my point of view. How uh, the the cats from Apache just came in, yes. Sam and Clay. Maybe they should. But I'm I mean, wrapped up in myself. You know, I'm trying to catch a hang with these guys over here. Let's Beautiful. get them over here. Yeah, yo, you guys want to come in? This is where we met. Hey, Yo, guys, yeah, Mapache's here. This is the place that where I met these guys. That was my question Brent for you. Brent was is... wearing a nice tie dye. <laughs> I remember it. Hey guys, how you doing, man? Good. I haven't hey, seen guys. you in a while. Have a seat. Get in here. We're on Facebook Live. Yeah, come on in. Hey, yeah. Right. Now you know, Brent. I wanted to ask you about these guys, but more so, any younger cats. How important is it for you to ment mentor younger cats, even if it just means? you're passing on the lineage of the music and the love. There's no, no it's, bottom line yeah, to it. Yeah, it's obviously really important to me because I do it. I might have something to do You've with You've been doing it for a long time. My own kids or something. I don't know, I liked, it's, I think I've always appreciated the help that I got from others. I must have really felt something when people have done that for me, so I think I like to give that feeling. You know, and it's not to everybody. How'd you, you meet you them? How'd you, the meet, how'd you meet Clay? How'd you meet, how'd you meet <laughs> They walked in here when Gospel Beach was doing a residency. There was literally not many people here, but I'd see their faces in here. I think I saw you first, and he, he brought Sam down to the last night, or did you come here? No, I came here, but you had seen him once before. Right? You yeah. came once before, and I was like, this, and, and it was funny that their name is Mapache because he had a total surfer. <laughs> sunburned but he had like white around here like right. he had sunglasses on and you could tell and he had longer hair and I was like man we, we must be doing something right because we're really drawing some cool people to this show <laughs> you know uh, Sam I, I, I wanted to ask you like because I when was what was the best critical feedback you've gotten in like the last couple weeks or months the best critical and speak and speak loud, you know, because I'm just feeling like people come up to me and say that was so beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. Everything's so nice. What was the last? What was the best feat? Oh, they, they turned the ambient music on. That's what, the birds, though. They turned the birds. What, what, what has been the best piece of critical feedback you've gotten about your onstage presentation and, and performance? It's it's highly unique and uh, and, and very West Coast. Come close. You're gonna to have to come real close. Cause I'll I, tell you what he says. As yeah. far as critical <laughs> feedback, someone told me I looked really sad on stage. That's great. You know, I dig, <laughs> man. Wow. Uh, I mean, you're focused. You're in the zone, obviously. Uh, I mean, I'm I, sad. 
Uh, What's actually was, good? That's that's <laughs> criticism and that's a good compliment. Yeah, I mean, you can't be happy out there all the time. <laughs> but I I am like when I look at well, let me ask you how how did you guys uh, meet? Have you been playing guitar together for a long time? Each of you have very distinct so uh, improvisational style. Clay and I. Yes, uh, very 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 different and and very cool. Each of them are different. But how long have you been playing? Have doing interplay together? Eighth or ninth grade, somewhere around there. Yeah, we yeah. grew up nice in the time. same town and went to the same high school. And uh, yeah, we just had mutual friends. Is that friends. ten years yet? I don't think it's so. About eight, eight six. Right, like no, eight, eight it's eight been years. no, it's been about ten years, right? Because I've been thirteen. I just want to tell you. Yeah, that please, please, four please. Years. High school was four years, and I've been out of college. Or these guys argue years. about that. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta come to California. Nobody is hung up. All we do is hang out on big plush pillows. Dude, on this is the hippest carpets. scene I've ever. Look at these lights, man. And we yeah. listen to the birds, yeah. and then we play music by a pool. And you know, this is it. Were you? But, but here's what the are you doing out there? <laughs> Rat, you know, Brent told me, you know, he came to the birds or that sort of aesthetic uh, after all these different genres of music. Were you into different music uh, before you became a band? We, I mean, we both listen to a lot of different stuff, but I think the core of what brought us together was a, was partially a, um, a shared love for a lot of the same music. That is still music that's very important to us and influences us, and kind of like stuff we grew up on. Rock and roll, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, you play music, uh, you sing together every day. Try to. Pretty much. Horn said yeah. that to me in the interview. He yeah. said maybe on Christmas you don't do it with with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 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 I mean, the other question I always wanted to ask you guys, like tonight, I, I dream that you'd have a, a rhythm section. Is that something that Mapache? Where are you at with, as far as that evolution is concerned? Be be as honest as you can. Yeah, I wouldn't say that's, that's very far off. Um, I mean, we've played with the rhythm section before. Our record has a rhythm section on it. Uh, so I would say that that's not very far out. Clay, what do you say? Yeah, um, we kind of have some... We've been just meeting so many people now, too, uh, the last couple of years. And we've made friends with good friendships with people who we love playing music with as well. So um, yeah, I think... It'd be crummy just to arbitrarily, like, hey, we need some drums, let's get it. Yeah, yeah, that would be well, the because, last thing we would Because you guys do. are so tight, you're such friends, that's what makes, seems to me, that's what, that's what added to the great songs, the great singing, and the great playing was that you guys were bros, you know, like, close. And that was what, before you guys got here, we were talking about that with Beachwood. Like, you know, Chris and I were, like, best buds. And it was like... Might as well join up, you know, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like so. You... Yeah, that's how we'd want to do it. Keep it as family as possible. Yeah. So it's really a matter of trust. Like you, you have to find. Would it be a traditional trap set player, or would it maybe a different kind of percussion, or maybe just an up? I mean, have you, to me, I'm like gong. Looking... <laughs> Some heavy gong. Three gong players at least. How many songs do you sing in different languages? I, I guess it's span. I mean, you know, my. My ex-wife is Taiwanese and I learned no Chinese, but I wanted to ask you about uh, the... How many languages do you... How many songs do you sing in different languages? We just sing a couple in Spanish and English. Where was that in... What, what, what is that in your palate? Where did that... Where, where did the world music flavor come from? How did you guys get hip to that? Well, I lived for two years in Mexico, so I learned a lot about uh, Spanish, Mexican culture and Mexican music. And that's kind of yeah, you play like Garcia too. So did you speak Spanish growing up? No, not till I went there. So you learned? I learned there. Right. So, um... How about you? Yeah. I don't speak very good, I can speak a little bit. No, but just kind of like growing up in Just being, you know. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> well, I've been seeing these guys a lot. Um, They're great people. You've, I know you've seen them, but if you haven't, buy their record, download it, stream it, go to their concert. Did you get off on the, did I mean did you get off on the rhythm section on the on the album or it was good yeah. for the album but it's different 
Because you guys swing really hard just as a duo. You I know? Like, I like playing just the two of us as well, just as much as I would like anything else. Like I, That's part, one of the reasons why we have also just kept it the two of us, because it's just, it like feels pretty good. It feels really good just like that. So there's there was never like a, a feeling like we had to um, get it some percussion or bass or something. Plus it's like evolving the way you guys play together is evolving. So it's not like, oh, this is boring, just the two guys. You know what I mean? No, it's like okay. going somewhere and then there's new songs. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, I don't even know, like if time would, the only, I could just see if you met somebody and yeah. it's almost like if you're married and then, or if you're not married and you meet somebody, you don't have control over that. You can't yeah. say, yeah. I want a drummer or I want to fall in love. You're just gonna yeah. be like. No, I mean, you're, 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 you're prescient right now. I mean, like how many, how, how big a bag of, did you guys learn a lot of uh, repertoire or are you just obsessed with original creation? Well, we've learned a lot of other songs too. We love to do cover songs. Yeah. I'm... But do you turn them upside down and inside out? Or do you just generally sometimes. play them off the record? Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. It depends. But Which, I always thought it was really cool when bands would put out a record with eight cover songs on it, you know, and two, like Emmy Harris records or something like that, you know. So we, we love, I mean, what if, if we feel a song, whether it's ours or whether it's someone else's, we love to play it either way. Um, well, I've been seeing these guys in New York and Rademacher, it's, it's an honor to, uh, connect with you guys I want to I want to see some good music tonight and uh, love always man peace Jake you're the best thanks for spreading our scene no I mean the, the vibe people. the vibe is intoxicating I've seen this guy in the airport everywhere dude <laughs> much love this is the Jake Feinberg show we'll see you later